Welcome to Mind Meets Body and Soul, a podcast that connects the dots between clinical mental health and spiritual holistic wellness. I'm Heather, a licensed clinical social worker and mental health guru. And I'm Devin, a Reiki master, spiritual teacher, and lover of all things woo-woo. We're here to discuss various wellness topics, highlighting the connection between the mind, body, and soul. We'll be offering nuggets of wisdom from each of our fields with the ultimate goal of bridging the gap between our two worlds. Whether you lean more into cognitive psychology or flow with the woo-woo waters, our intention is to help you prioritize yourself and unlock a fresh perspective to healing, growth, and expansion. We're so excited you're here. Let's jump in. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mind Meets Body and Soul episode 36 and also the last episode of 2023, which is wild and exciting and sad in a way too. But as always, happy to be here, here with my lovely co-host, Heather. How's it going? It's good. It's going well. It's been chilly here. I feel like I'm just like very tired today. So I have like a cozy little sweater um, and just excited and happy to be here and really eager to like have this conversation. I like our Q&A episodes. I do too. Yes. We're very sleepy today, but we are happy, sleepy, but happy to be here. And yes, as we have spoken about in the last few episodes and on social media, our last episode of 2023 will be a listener Q&A. We love these listener episodes where we get to open the floor for our listeners to drop any wellness questions that you may have related to all things mind, body, soul, well-being. And then we have the fun task of sharing these questions and our thoughts on them. Before we jump into the episode, though, Heather, you have some fun news to share. Mm -hmm. Over the weekend, this past weekend, Devin attuned me and I am now a level one Reiki practitioner. So that was really, really fun and like extremely full circle, which is not lost on me. So uh, I am now in the woo-woo world a little bit. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Congratulations. It was truly such an honor to share that weekend with you and to share all of the ancient teachings of this Japanese energy healing modality and to show you just how simple it is and how much of a natural healer you already are and using this modality of hands-on energy healing is just going to amp up the work that you're already doing with clients. Yeah, I'm really excited to be able to practice this. I'm still in my 21 days of self Reiki, which I'm also really very much enjoying. So I told Nick and Tortellini to get ready because we're going to get lots of hands on Reiki in this household. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. All the chakra checks and chakra balancing. Very cool. And one thing in particular that I loved as we were going throughout this weekend and we were practicing some hands-on healing with some other people I brought in was just visualizing you in your office, whether that's in person as you are working through Reiki 1 now or down the line when you get your Reiki 2 certification, which allows you to do distance healing, is combining that modality, that more holistic energy healing with what you do as a therapist currently. And just how powerful that is to, exactly as we do in this podcast, bridge the gap between the two worlds. Yeah. I'm really excited to be able to use it. I mean, I've already seen how powerful it is when clients come into my sessions and talk about their experience in Reiki. So I know that it can be really powerful. I mean, even just something as simple, and I don't mean simple in like, an offensive way, but something thing as simple as being able to like read their chakras and check those and like use that to guide our conversation, I think can be a really powerful form of healing. And and we've spoken about the limits of the mind. And if we can't articulate what we're feeling, then like we're kind of stuck. So I'm allowed, I'm happy to have this other avenue to now like include in that work as well. Absolutely. And then beyond just how impactful it will be for those that you work with too, We've talked about before how Reiki really opened up the doors for me spiritually 
to experience life in a different way and to heal myself in a different way. So I'm loving this journey that you're on and I'm grateful for for you, for your openness and just for everything that this podcasting journey, our connection has brought. So what a wonderful way to end the 2023 calendar year. Yeah, very exciting. Thanks to you for leading me along this journey and, you know, teaching me all of the things and being just here with me. I'm I'm excited to have you kind of pioneering or leading the way here and and I'm happy to have you with me. Mm, thank you. In other fun news, I have actually funnily right behind me is your birthday present. So I know there's oh. some other fun things happening. Yes. I think because we d- this is our last episode dropping for 2023, we'll have to take some time now to acknowledge and celebrate that my 31st birthday is in eight days on December 16th. <laughs> Yay! It is my 31st lap around the sun, and I love my birthdays. I know that you know that, and now our audience, for those who have been around, I love my birthday. I love everybody's birthday. I think everybody's birthday is special and fun and worth celebration. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, I think there's something to be said. And that's one of the things I've learned in doing this podcast is there's something to be said about being able to hold space for celebrating yourself and acknowledging all that comes in another trip around the sun in a 365 day year. But you know, all that you've accomplished. I think it's a great space to celebrate you because you deserve to be celebrated. And that's something I can, I know that's hard for me and hard for a lot of people, but I also agree that like birthdays are important and everybody deserves to be celebrated to whatever capacity that looks like for them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I fully agree. Something that I love about my birthday being in December is that I always associate like my entire year with the calendar year too. So as I'm closing Mm. out 30 and entering 31, it's like we're also closing out 2023 and entering 2024. And so in the theme of reflection and closing out 2023 and also closing out my, my 30th, I was thinking a lot this morning about this past year and how I don't think I've ever felt more human than in this past year, like in this 30, in this year of 2023, thinking back to everything that this year has been for me, like some of the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows and everything in between, all of the happiness and joy and love and grief and sadness and frustration and truly everything in between. What's interesting is that I I know that this will, we're alluding to our first episode of 2024, but I know that the intention that I set for 2023 was expansion. And now looking back on it, I can't think of a more expansive year than one where I get to experience everything that this life has to offer. And it's all like through all of the, through any and all of the seemingly good and seemingly bad things being able to find the beauty in every single piece of it, or at least like find the light in every single piece of it has just made for such a great year. I mean, even just you speaking to like the expansion and I'm just thinking like the highest of highs puts a pin on one side of the spectrum and then the lowest of lows puts a pin on the opposite side of the spectrum. And then you've experienced every moment in between that is literally like holding space and expanding space for all of that. And I don't wish the low lows on you or anybody, but I also understand that they are part of our human experience. They're out of our Mm -hmm. control and we can't ignore or deny them. So I'm proud of you for having that space and holding that space and feeling those things and then finding the light in it. I think that's a lot of growth. Thank you, Heather. I, I, couldn't agree more. And, you know, I thought, I think about how we as souls sign up for this lifetime. And I know I'll speak for myself. Like I know that my soul decided 
to experience everything that this human life had to offer. And, you know, because we love a good visual, I think of, I think this year I've, I've been able to see my life. It's kind of like my past year has felt like when you go out to dinner with your friends, you go out to a really good restaurant, you are just happy to be there surrounded by your best friends, you're feeling good, feeling confident about yourself. You're super hungry and you're look at the, you're looking at this menu and you're like, wow, I want one of everything. And you're like, this looks good and this looks good and that looks good. And like, I don't know about this one, but maybe I'll try this one. And I feel like I came here to like sample a little bit of everything in this lifetime that I have. And as I'm closing out 30 in 2023 and entering 31 in 2024, I really feel like the world is like my restaurant. And my life and the choices that I make like are on this menu of things that I can experience and try. And some I might try and be like, nope, not for me. This was a bad choice. But then I'm also going to find things that I do really love. And it's like always just about the experience as a whole that makes this life experience so beautiful. Yeah, it does. And I mean, I think I'm picturing like the waiter or, or server being like, you can't go wrong, you know, like everything on the menu is good. And like you said, it might not be to your liking or to your taste, but any choice you're making, you're making for a reason. So I feel like I like that analogy a lot and we could dive deep into it. And I know we have a lot of <laughs> questions to get to and everything, but I think that's a good analogy and I love a good analogy. So I can mm -hmm. appreciate that. Thank you. So yeah, treat the world like it is a restaurant and you are just picking and choosing from the menu, trying things out. And as long as you're surrounded by good company and being open to the experience of it all, you can't go wrong. So with that, let's get into some of these listener Q and A's. I know we have many good ones and I would love for you to kick us off there. Yes, we did. We got a bunch of good submissions. Um, okay, so the first one that we'll go with is what are your favorite ways to separate your personal life and your work life? Do you want to start us off there? I think I used to have it very separate. I think I would keep strong boundaries around trying not to bring work home and making sure that I was like I, I used to use my drive home, my commute, which I don't have as a virtual business anymore, but I used to use my commute as my time to like listen to music, decompress before I got home. Um, I remember like my clipboard or my corkboard at work at that time had a quote that said like, not my circus, not my monkeys. Like I would really preventatively separate a lot of that. I think now, and this might just come with like being older and being more in control of my work too, but I embrace that it is part of my life. Like this is not all of my life, but part of my life is that I'm a deeply empathetic, caring person and I work with people literally all day long. And I don't know that I separate it as much as just acknowledge the impact that it has on me. And some days I'm like so energized by it. I'm like, this was a great day or this was a great session. And I feel like this client had a breakthrough and I love that for them. And then other times I, I joke that like I crawl up the stairs to our apartment because I'm so just drained and not because I don't like my clients. I care deeply and love all of them to be completely transparent, but I, it's just heavy, you know, like it's emotional, some of the work that we're doing. And I just acknowledge that. Like, I, I don't think I can truly answer this question for this person because I feel like for me they are one in the same. Sometimes I'm going to numb my brain with reality TV and Bravo. And other times I'm going to go for a long walk and listen to a podcast and just kind of like ground myself. But I think the big thing for me is acknowledging that like it is part of my life, but it's not all of my life. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think too, it's also somewhat different speaking as an entrepreneur than it would be for somebody who's working a a job in corporate world, for example, like under a boss, because being an entrepreneur, so much of your life is so much of your business is also in ways part of you. And so I think that that sound advice for those whose work are, is also very closely linked to like who you are as a person. Like, for example, 
maybe an accountant, right, isn't living like an accountant after the eight hours of work, right? Like living, being a therapist or being a energy healer, spiritual teacher, it's like we are not only using these skills, gifts, whatever, in a way to help people during our work hours, but then we're also applying that work within ourselves afterwards, you know, and it's, Mm -hmm. it's hard to make that differentiation between business and personal life. Yeah. This one I'll say for me is more of a like, do as I say, not as I do. Um, I am trying to grow my business and I'm kind of in like hustle mode with that. So I'm working wild hours and just feel always on with it. But for someone who is looking, I don't want to like neglect the question either that like, I might not be the best role model for this, but for someone who is looking for that separation between work and personal, I think no notice where they're overlapping or where there's gray space and try to create more clear boundaries or limit things. You're, I mean, don't limit so much that you get fired from your job, but draw limits and use PTO and make sure that you're saying no to things or asking for help or delegating when possible. You're still a human. And in my biased opinion, we're not on this planet to work. And I think we already have to spend too much time of our lives working. So the limit for everyone looks different, but reflect on what yours is notice when you're overstepping it and then try to put things into place to protect that. Yeah, I think that is, you just perfectly said that. I think the difficult to, thing too, and I remember having this conversation during you know more of the COVID times when people were adjusting to the work from home, was that the lines between work and personal life got so blurred because now all of a sudden, We were working, people were working from their homes, from their beds even. Mm -hmm. And there was no like physical separation between work and personal life. They were sleeping in the same spot that they were taking conference calls on. And then two, feeling like it's not just like you leave the office at 5 p.m. and then work is done for the day because so much is virtual now. It's like, well, what, do you not have a phone, a a, a computer that you can be checking your emails on? And I think that's, where people might be feeling a lot of that stress is like feeling like they have to always be accessible 24 seven. If our listener who asked that question is feeling that pressure, then comes in that suggestion that you just made of boundaries. And it's like setting that boundary as much as you can that like, after this hour, I will not be checking my emails, I will not be responding to emails, or I will be responding to emails starting at nine o'clock AM, the next business day. And implementing those boundaries is not always going to be easy, but it's like, just like we talked about in last week's episode, boundaries are there to protect us and to protect our relationships as well. I'm telling people all the time, like my people pleasers, if the only thing that you can buy into is reminding yourself that like you need to go home and disconnect and separate from work, so that you can recharge and then come back and be a better employee tomorrow. If that's the only way that we can get you to buy into setting these boundaries and these limits, do that because that's actually true too. If you're not going home and charging back up with your life and your loved ones, and then you're going to come in tomorrow like a, a robot or drained or like not feeling like you have the energy to give to your job. So, I mean, I do think it's important for your productivity too, but more importantly for your soul and for the person that you are, like, I hope you can find that separation or that balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think about people too, that are maybe parents, right. And they go from working to them being a parent and there isn't that in between time for themselves. And I'm not a parent for those who are parents, please take this with a grain of salt, but I can just think about what might be the most helpful thing. And it's like, factoring in that, yes, you have professional life, you have parent life, and you also need to have personal life or personal time as well. So regardless, if that's whether you're a parent of humans or a parent of animals, or just find yourself like oscillating between working and then like eating and sleeping, 
intentionally creating that time in between so that maybe you are transitioning out of your professional life into this space where you are like decompressing from the day and and filling your your battery back up and then transitioning into this third part of your life where it's like okay now I do all the things like taking care of my children my animals or doing all of the like cooking and eating dinner and getting ready to go to bed. Yeah. I think that space is like a critical piece of this because otherwise we're just kind of going through the motions. But if we're holding that space and creating that space, you're not going to have the time. You have to make the time to decompress and switch gears into something else, I think that allows you to like reconnect with your human self, with your soul so that you're like, okay, I am a person and, and none of these, none of these roles that I play encompass all of me and they're just parts of me. And I think we have to be the one to create the entirety of ourselves. I don't Mm -hmm. know if that made any sense at all. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I think that, I think that was sound advice. And I am glad that this person asked that question because it's such a, such a multifaceted question. Shall we go to question two? Let's do it. All right. Question two, best ways to support a friend going through a rough time without toxic positivity. I love the caveat of like, without toxic positivity, this person Mm -hmm. is clearly listening to our episodes. Um, do you have anything initially? Do you want to start us off with this one? One of the biggest things I've learned in working with clients and also just applying what I've learned there in my relationships outside of work too, is that we all desire to feel seen and to feel heard and to feel supported and loved. So when our loved ones are experiencing some kind of challenge in their life, I think the best way to support them is to just listen and to just be there holding space for them because it's not necessarily always about needing to provide a solution or try to fix the the situation. And we talked about this in that episode on toxic positivity. We try to switch into that positive narrative oftentimes because being in anywhere but that positive space sometimes feels really uncomfortable. So we think that we're always needing to seek out or get ourselves to a place of happiness and positivity. But as we've talked about in conversation after conversation here, the human experience is meant to be experienced fully, all things. And that sometimes more often than not, we have to experience these lower, uncomfortable, frustrating moments of our life to grow and evolve. And so my first thought there in answering the question, how to support a friend without toxic positivity it's simply listening and listening more than you speak. And then asking maybe your friend when they are sharing something, if they are, would you like some advice or do you really just need somebody to be here to hear you out? Like verbatim, a thousand percent, exactly what I would have said. We don't like to see people we care about suffering So our immediate reaction a lot of the times is like, I'm going to make this better for them because I care about them so much. The reality is though, when we're doing that, we are entirely missing the mark on what they need. They just have this emotion and this energy that they need to release and be able to hold space for and feel their way through. So when we jump in and say like, oh, do this or like, oh, I have this idea or even just start speaking without validating, we're like shutting down or like putting a lid on these emotions and this energy that they're feeling. And it's unhelpful for them. But then it's frustrating for me too, because I'm like, oh, come on, like, why isn't it working? Why aren't you feeling better? And that doesn't help anybody in the situation. As a therapist, sometimes I feel that like, I call it my Mr. Fix It. Like I feel that like come up and I'm like, I want to help this person. I want to like fix this for them. And the only thing, the true best thing that we can do is literally hear them, understand that emotion, and then validate where it's coming from. Yeah, I'm glad that we were on the same page there, probably as a product of all of these conversations that we've been having. 
And I think that suggestion kind of relieves us feeling responsible for other people's happiness and feeling like we need to have a solution for their problems. And it it just kind of brings back in this element of trust that they're going to figure it out. And also the understanding that we are not responsible for any other person other than ourselves, obviously different if you have kids, but you know what I mean? Like I am not responsible for another person's well-being. I'm just here as their friend, family member, whatever, to support or to complement their well-being. Yeah, a hundred percent. Another thing that I recently saw, actually, it was a snippet of a podcast episode where this podcast guest who was in the wellness field was talking about how to truly listen to somebody when they are speaking to you or when they're sharing something that they're going through, you know, they're going through a hard time. It's such a natural tendency for us to be like, I know how stressed you feel. I once had an experience where I experienced this too. And this is how I solved it. And this is what happened for me. And I'm sure this is what's going to happen for you. And I think it's so natural for us to want to relate like that. And again, we're looking for the like light in the tunnel. We're looking to solve their problem because this is how it worked for me. So maybe it'll happen for you this way. And maybe, but maybe that's not where our friend, family member, this person who's expressing their struggles with us right now is, and maybe they don't really want to, maybe they, maybe they're not in that headspace to consider that things could be better right now. And so I think the invitation when we are listening is to truly just listen without even having to connect back to some experience that we've personally had. We have this tendency to make it about us, again, well-intentioned, but it's not about us. It's about them in this moment. Yeah, I think that's really hard because to some extent we are selfish beings, not selfish, malicious, but like I see the world through my eyes, period. So when you're telling me a story, I'm like, oh my gosh, I get it. Like I've been there or I've been in a similar position, like you said, well-intentioned, but it isn't about us in that moment. So if we can put our ego aside and just be with them in that space, get down on that level or down in that hole with them that they're in, they know they're not alone. They're seen. And we just like, this is your world, but like energetically, I think we just like glow a little bit when we feel seen or or when we have something like we're resonating with someone. So that's all that you, or that in my opinion is like the best thing that you can do is just like be there with them, connect with them, hold space for them hear them, like you said, listen more than you speak. And I think that that's all the best way for them to help for you to help them move through the the muck that they're stuck in. And I share so much appreciation for this listener of ours who asked this question, because it's such a beautiful thing to want to be able to support a friend in the the most healthy, loving way possible. Mm hmm. Another great one. We've gotten, we always get good ones, but we do. These are all very good. The last one, I was going to say they're all very timely. And this last one is especially very timely. So it says manifesting Rex and astrology insight for 2024. I love that this listener thinks that I have all of the astro insight because I'm by no (laughs) means an astrologer, no matter how many times I talk about, you know, moon cycles and transits and whatnot. I will say that we are ending the calendar year and starting um, the new year with a Mercury retrograde. So Mercury retrogrades (laughs) tend to bring a little bit of chaos in all things communication, in travel. It's really a good time to slow down and to really f- hone in on those or really focus in on the the R's, like the re's, like redo, recheck, rethink, um, relax. <laughs> and so as we are closing out 2023, if it kind of feels like you are swimming against the tide, just turn on your back mm-hmm. and, you know, float down the way that the stream wants to take you. It might be a little rocky. Double check your travel plans with Mercury ruling all things communication, just think before you speak or before you send that text message, that email, and then 
will still be in like the retro shade period of time in the beginning of January, but it will clear up shortly after. So not always a fun way to end a year and start a new one, but um, we'll start with that Astro Insight. And once we received this question, I also reached out to one of my astrologer friends to see if she had any professional insight. And so whatever she has to offer, we'll drop it in the show notes and you can check her insight and also her pages out there in case that's helpful. All of that is very helpful. I just saw, I follow this account on Instagram um, and he posted like the number one manifesting myth. And what he was saying is that like when you are manifesting, now this is my spark notes version of it. (laughs) He was basically saying like, when you're manifesting, you're not manifesting things. You're manifesting the, who you want to be in pursuit of your dreams or what you want to become in this journey. So you're not going to manifest a car or a new cell phone, manifesting what you want to embody in your life. So peace, fulfillment, balance, manifesting like, and I think this could be something that we could dive into a little deeper, like digging around in, okay, so if you want to manifest a car, why? Right? Like, and this is what I'm doing in therapy all the time is helping people dig down to like the root or what I call the process of the thing. So what is it that you want? The car is going to give you happiness. Okay. So you're really looking for more joy, maybe more peace, maybe more pride. Maybe this car would help you feel like you could celebrate yourself or feel proud of yourself. So those are all of the things I think that we're really going to be looking for in this manifestation rather than manifesting like the thing itself. Cause what we know or what I know is that like things don't actually give us the joy. It's like what that thing represents. Absolutely. That was such a timely found real. And I think that comes back to the conversations we've had before on like setting intentions. And like, as you just said, getting clear on why it is that we want something and what this, what we think this thing, this physical thing will bring us. And so when this person asked this question, I actually thought of something that you always say, and that is zoom out. It's like, yes, Mm -hmm. we can ask for what we want and maybe get to the bottom of, of what that thing will bring for us, like peace, and then zoom out and allow that manifestation to come through in a way that likely is going to look different than the one that we have our eye set on. We've talked about before how funny it is, how cute it is that our limited human minds, we think that we know exactly what we need in any given moment. If we can just humble ourselves for a moment and like take that step back and consider the fact that like we don't know 100% of what we need in our life that's going to bring us to that next level peace, happiness, fulfillment then our manifestations actually come through a lot more powerfully. Our human self doesn't know, but it also can't control. Like I think control is another thing that we talk about a lot. And I think we like to be like, okay, I'm going to manifest this in this way. And this is how I'm going to experience it. And this is when it's going to come. And like universe, Mm -hmm. God, spirit, whatever it is, is probably like hysterical because it's just not at all that way. But if we're open to it, like it coming how it does and how it's best for us, then I think that's when it'll really resonate and we'll really be able to like fully experience it. Yeah. Yeah. And the only last piece that I was thinking about and like big proponent of this one this year is that law of resonance where what we are an energetic match to, what we are resonating with will come into our lives. Whatever you are seeking to manifest, give that to yourself first. Whatever that external thing, experience, product, relationship, whatever you think is going to bring you that happiness, fulfillment, peace, working on that first hello with a therapist, coach, healer, whatever, Figuring out how to tap into that, connect with that, embody that first, then makes those manifestations come through so much more 
quickly and easily because you already know what it feels like to be in that state of happiness, peace, fulfillment, whatever. And this manifestation is simply just complementing that. It's just further evidence for why we're always talking about like boundaries and protecting your energy because we, if, if we need to be in this space so that we can have this stuff resonating with us, we have to make sure that we're protecting ourselves from any of that negative energy or prioritizing ourselves and taking care of our energy and having that like energetic hygiene where we're catering to that. And I think the cool thing about this conversation is that when this episode comes out, you'll have that space to do some of that reflection before the start of the new year so that you're in the space to be able to allow those things to resonate with you and understand what that feels like. Yes. And it just made me think of like some of the, one of the best ways that we can probably close out the year and start the new one when it comes to manifesting is like getting clear on what it is that we are leaving behind in 2023 and getting clear on as we step into this new year, what we are calling in, right? It's not a new practice by any means, but we're doing so with the purpose of choosing what energies we resonate with, what energies we want for ourselves in the new year and moving forward. And what we've learned in the past year that just like, you know, it's like the things we tried off the menu at the restaurant that were like, not for me, wouldn't get that one again, won't be returning. Absolutely. I mean, everything I think we're doing, we're learning along the way. And I think a big part of all of this stuff that we're doing and living in this life is realizing what's working and what's not. And if it serves you, keep it. If it doesn't, release it, let it go. And I think that's how we're always evolving. People love to always talk about like if they believe that people can change or not. Absolutely, we can change. We're constantly letting go of or or should be letting go of things that don't serve us anymore and calling in and being open and learning new things along the way. So I think that a lot of this is twofold and really threefold, maybe actually releasing, doing your own like energetic checking and making sure that like you're in the space to receive. And then the third part is receiving. Yeah. I love the trajectory of each of these like three questions that we've had because it feels very it feels like a very timely way to start wrapping up this episode as we are talking about looking forward into mm -hmm. the new year, but not being able to do so without looking back first. I think they were great questions. As always, I appreciate everyone who submits them. Um, I love being able to like connect with our audience and, and speak. I mean, we're always speaking to you guys, but really truly speak to you and the questions that you have. So thank you for submitting them. Yes. Thank you everyone for submitting them and just know that this link is always active. So it doesn't have to be at a time when we are marketing that we are hosting a Q and a episode. We are always collecting questions as we go. And then when we hold these Q and a, these listener Q and a episodes, we will make sure to respond to this question. So thank you. We love to hear all of your feedback. As we wrap up this episode, say see you later to our podcast listeners for 2023. Looking forward into 2024. It was your idea and I loved it that we each take a look up at our vision boards and both leave our audience with something that is calling out to us. So would you love to start us off? Can I just say like my word of this year, which I've said before was flow. And that is like big and front and center on my vision vision board. And I think knowing that there's going to be mercury retrograde, knowing that the holidays are here, ready or not, like mm -hmm. I think just flow, just okay. surrender, be, accept. Like to me, that means so many different things, but I think that's what I really want to leave. It's what I started with and I hope to elevate that in the next year for myself. So if we can all just <laughs> flow through it, I think we'll be okay. Perfect. And how about you, Devin? What do you have for us? I have two words here that's in the right-hand corner of my business vision board. And the first word is community. And the second word is connection. And as we are in holiday season, 
wrapping up a really good year in this podcasting journey and everything that we've created through the podcast, it just feels like a really great reminder. You've said it before that we are social beings, that we need and we thrive in feeling like we belong to the communities that we're in. When we connect with one another over this podcast or connect with our listeners in our Q&A episodes, that is truly what aids to our mind, body, and soul well-being. Aw, this is like the end of our, I can't believe we've done this for, I mean, it, almost a full year now. It's kind of wild. I, that's the sad part about us doing this virtually is I can't hug you, but I would <laughs> love, I'm giving you like an air hug. I love to, hug. would love to give you a hug <laughs> and to our listeners, like I'm just, I'm ending this feeling really grateful for you and for everyone tuning in. I think it's been a wild journey. Like we started a podcast this year and that's pretty cool. So thanks, Devin. Yeah, thank you, Heather. This has been such a lovely experience. I'm so proud of us for everything that we've accomplished and all that's to come. And we wouldn't have been able to do it without the listeners that we have. So here's to all parties involved. A great year of growth, of healing, of expansion, evolution, and all of that and more to come in the new year. Yay. Well, thank you to everybody for tuning in. I can't say we'll see you next week because we won't. We are going to take a few weeks off as we've been uh, mentioning. Use this time to tune into past episodes, um, reflect on anything that it is that you know, you're trying to let go of and manifest into the new year. We will be back January 9th. Um, so just like three-ish weeks, and then we'll be back with all our regularly scheduled episodes. And we appreciate you for listening today, every time you listen, and we'll talk to you soon. Yay. Talk to you soon, everybody. See you in 2024. Woo. Bye. Bye. We are so glad that you took the time to share this space with us. We'll be releasing new episodes of Mind Meets Body and Soul every Tuesday, so be sure to give us a follow and share this podcast with those you love. To connect with us and join our communities, head to the show notes where you'll find our contact information and individual websites. Until next week, stay grounded, keep growing, and trust that everything you seek is unfolding for you.